Hi guys, thanks for tuning in to the Command Valley. My name is Griffin and we're glad you're here today. For the pre-cons coming with Zendikar Rising, we've decided to give our input of what cards that you can take out and what cards you can put in to bring the deck's level up just a notch. For this video, we're going to be going over the 12 cards to put in and the 12 cards to take out from Aboon, Muldaya Ancestor from the Land's Wrath pre-con coming out with Zendikar Rising. For these cards, I've kept myself within a strict $15 budget, so if you're looking to get some cards to upgrade this deck, it'll only cost you $15 to put these 12 cards in, and it will definitely up your deck up to be able to play with some other casual decks. A quick reminder that this episode and this podcast is brought to you by Game Grid. If you are looking to get any of these 12 cards or other cards for your commander decks, click the link in the description below to head over to Game Grid's website where you'll be able to order cards and get them shipped directly to your house. With all of our videos, we include a copy and pasteable deck list in the show notes for you to be able to take to Game Grid's website and put it right into their super easy mass entry. If you're looking to get one or both of these pre-con decks, then you can also go to Game Grid's website and get those pre-ordered and shipped right to your house as well. And hey, if you are enjoying this content or any of our other content, then please feel free to subscribe, like this video, put some comments down of what you think of these includes and what you think of these discludes and check out our other content on our channel page. If you're looking for an extra way to support us and also get exclusive cool benefits, including playing Commander with Command Valley over Discord, then please feel free to check out our Patreon at patreon.com slash Command Valley. We super appreciate all of our Patreons and hope that you decide to join us. All right, without further ado, let's jump into it. First, let's go over the cards that I decided to take out. Please know that this is just my personal opinion of what cards to put in and what cards to take out. There are many includes since this is a landfall, land style deck. So if you have some other includes that you would like to mention, then please comment them in the comment section below and we're happy to look over those. I won't go into depth with the cards that we're taking out, but I will go into more depth with the cards that we're putting in. The 12 cards that I have taken out of this deck are Elvish Rejuvenator, Core Cartographer, Scare Tiller, Elite Scale Guard, Beanstalk Giant, Sandstone Oracle, Nissa's Renewal, Treacherous Terrain, Retreat to Kazandu, Spore Mound, Retreat to Emeria, and Together Forever. I found that these cards were very subpar compared to other cards that we could put in, and also some of these have more focus on plus one plus one counters, and I've decided to put most of the focus into the landfall effects, because those are going to be the most powerful, and that's how we're going to be able to power up this deck quickly. Now for our 15 bucks, here are the 12 cards that I have included, starting off with Dragon Master Outcast. For one red, we have a 1-1 Human Shaman at the beginning of your upkeep. If you control six or more lands, put a 5-5 Red Dragon creature token with flying onto the battlefield. This card is an amazingly super cheap, very powerful effect, especially if we're trying to get lands onto the battlefield, get some landfall effects, and get some extra advantage off of the number of lands that we have. It's very easy to get to six lands in Commander, especially in a deck where we're trying to get lands onto the battlefield quickly, so this is an awesome include for this deck. Next up, to replace some of the poor ramp that we've had, like Scare Tiller and Elvish Rejuvenator, we have Secure a Tribe Elder, 100 green for a 1-1 Snake Shaman. You can sacrifice it to search the library for a basic land, put that card onto the battlefield tap, then shuffle your library. Much more effective and can find us any basic land from our library. Next up, we have Champion of Lampholt. For one green green, we have a 1-1 Creature Human Warrior. Creatures with power less than Champion of Lampholt's power can't block creatures you control. Whenever another creature enters the battlefield under your control, put a plus one plus one counter on Champion of Lampholt. This card is extremely synergistic with our deck because of our commander, the landfall effect putting counters on creatures. We can put those counters on Champion of Lampholt, and soon enough, our opponents will not be able to block any of our creatures or our lands that become creatures during our combat. This card is sitting under a dollar right now and is definitely a powerful include. Rada Heart of Keld is one red green for a 3 3 legendary creature elf warrior. As long as it's your turn, Rada Heart of Keld has first strike. You may look at the top card of your library anytime and you may play lands from the top of your library. And for four red green, Rada gets plus X plus X until end of turn where X is the number of lands you control. Effects and abilities that allow us to play lands from the top of our library, not just our hand, are very synergistic to this deck. Sometimes we'll find that we don't have any more lands in our hand, but we can strip them off the top of our deck, keep those landfall triggers going, and smash in with our creatures that are getting bigger, along with Rada being able to pump herself up and use that mana that we have. Next up, we have a card from Zendikar Rising. Probably one of my favorite new green cards, it's Scute Swarm. For two and a green, we have a 1-1 Insect with Landfall. Whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control, create a 1-1 green Insect Creature Token. If you control six or more lands, create a token that's a copy of Scute Swarm instead. 
So once you hit that sixth land, you get a token copy of Scoot Swarm, and now you have two Scoot Swarms. Now every single time you play land, you're going to get two more, and then you're going to get four more. This can get out of hand extremely quickly, and is very synergistic with another card that I've included in this deck as one of our finishers. So I'm very excited for this card in this deck. Next up, we've got Path of Discovery. For three and a green, we have an enchantment. Whenever a creature enters the battlefield under your control, it explores. Path of Discovery is really good to be able to strip those lands off the top of our deck so that we can play them. Kind of pseudo card draw, but can also put plus one plus one counters on our creature with synergize as well with the plus one plus one counter sub theme that goes on in this deck. We also have another piece of ramp for one and a green. We have Far Seek, a sorcery searcher library for a plains, island, swamp, or mountain card and put it into the battlefield tapped. Then shuffle your library. Because our commander is four mana, it's very important that we get that out as early as possible. So the turn two ramp is exactly where we want to be. Play some ramp on turn two, play your fourth line on turn three, and play a boon. Next up, we have another new card from Zenikar Rising. It's Valakut Exploration. For two and a red, we have an enchantment with Landfall. Whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control, exile the top card of your library. You may play that card for as long as it remains exiled. In the beginning of your end step, if there are cards exiled with Valakut Exploration, put them into their owner's graveyard, then Valakut Exploration deals that much damage to each opponent. So this is a really cool card to get out early. That means every land that we play, we're going to get an impulsive draw off the top of our deck. But if we play something like an Evolving Wilds, or if you want to put fetch lands in this deck, then we can get two triggers off of the Valakut Exploration, get two cards off of the top of our library, and we can play those cards. And even if we don't play those cards, we don't feel bad because they will do extra damage to our opponents on our end step. Very excited for this card. I think it's going to be really good in this deck. Ending with our last new card from Zenikar Rising that we've included is Felidar Retreat. Just a strictly better version from Retreat to Emeria. For three and a white, we have an enchantment with Landfall. Whenever land enters the battlefield, choose one. Create a 2-2 white cat beast creature token or put a plus one plus one counter on each creature you control. Those creatures gain vigilance until end of turn. This is really, really powerful, especially if we're gonna be able to crack some lands, sacrifice them, get some more onto the battlefield, and maybe ramp up. We could be possibly getting four plus one plus one counters on all of our creatures, or four two two white cat beast creature tokens, or a mixture of both. A really good budget card that's gonna give us a lot of power throughout the game. Now, before we move on to the finishers I've included in this deck, because I have found that there is a lack of win conditions in this deck. It just doesn't seem like it gets enough power to be able to, to get through. But before that, we have probably the card that I'm most excited for with this deck. I've been looking for a place to, to put this card, and I'm really excited to put this card into this deck. It's Colossification from Ikoria. It's five green green for an enchantment enchant creature. When it enters the battlefield, tap enchanted creature, and intent creature gets plus 20 plus 20. 20. The reason why I'm so excited for this card is because when you cast it and put it onto a boon, even though the enchantment taps a boon, once you go to combat, his trigger will go off and a land you control will become an XX elemental equal to a boon's power, which at least will be a 23-23. So you got a 23-23 land with trample and haste. That just is too exciting not to include in this deck. All right, the last two cards that I've included are nice, cheap budget win conditions. The two things that I found with this deck is that we're actually creating a lot of creatures, a lot of tokens, we've got a lot of power on the board, but we just need to have a little bit more to power through to take over the game. First up, we've got Enray's Forerunners for five green, green, green. We have a seven, seven creature boar with Vigilance, Trample, and Haste. And when he ETBs, other creatures you control get plus two, plus two, and gain Vigilance and Trample until end of turn. So a very nice, cheap budget. Crater Hoof Behemoth, obviously not as good as Crater Hoof Behemoth, but there's a reason why that card is above $30. But Enrace for Ornus is a perfect budget card to include as a win condition for this deck. And the second one we have is Overwhelming Stampede, which I'm surprised they didn't actually put into this deck, but it's an amazing include to put in it. It's three green green for a sorcery until end of turn. Creatures you control gain trample and get plus X plus X, where X is the greatest power among creatures you control. So put a bunch of plus one plus one counters on a creature, maybe even play a Colossification, cast an Overwhelming Stampede, give your your entire team a buff and take out all of your opponents or at least a couple of them at least one at least take a player down half their life total at least deal damage to your opponent at least cast your commander at least play a land at least play commander give it a try you won't regret it and that is it, folks. Those are the 12 cards to put in for $15. That is it. If you are looking to get these two pre-con decks and any other cards that you're looking for for your commander decks, plus the upgrades that I am suggesting, 
then feel free to click the link in the description below to go to Game Grid website where you can put in any number of cards that you need and get them shipped right to your house. Along with that, Game Grid also has these two decks on pre-order right now for only $40 for both of them. So go ahead and jump on that and make sure to click on the link in the description below. If you are looking for another Landfall S deck, we also did a deck tech for Omnath, Locus of Creation that is on our channel right now that we will link in this video and in the description below. Let me know what you think of these includes. Let me know if you disagree with what I took out. We love to hear your feedback and your thoughts and we enjoy having you guys around. Please also check out the other pre-con upgrade that Landon did for the Rogue Tribal deck that came along with the Land's Wrath deck. So go ahead and check that out also. The link will be in the description below. Thanks for tuning in. I hope you guys get these decks and I hope you have a lot of fun upgrading them and seeing how much fun we can have with these decks. Until next time.